Next up, the six-wheel drive amphibious truck that saw service in the Cold War along the Rhine, the Alvis Stalwart. Driving them on the road is very, uh, to say the least, interesting. Uh, you can either end up very quickly up the kerb or in the oncoming traffic if you're not careful because uh, the inherent design fault that was put into Stalwart, they weave because of the way the drive system set up both sets of wheels are trying to outpace one another so <coughs> you get this weaving effect and when you're driving it on the road it's either sort of you've got to keep over correcting it all the time and it is they are very hard work to drive on the road the concentration level you know if you drive for more than a couple of hours your eyes are like out on stalks where you've been trying to sort of constantly correct it yeah so they're very interesting drive on the road great fun uh, it does about 40 mile an hour flat out, um, which is fast enough when you're weaving all over the place. <laughs> the greatest fun really is to sort of drive along the side on the road, queue of traffic behind us and the stall in front was all ready to go into the water and he just turned right and went straight down the slipway, straight in the river and the people beyond were just, you know, a study. <laughs> When I got it, it, was, it had been sitting in a field for probably 12 years, so the paintwork was pretty grim. And um, I, I got it sandblasted to just tidy it up, because if I took it home the way it was, my wife would go absolutely ape. And um, so I just had it in primer. And I thought, oh, it actually looks quite nice in a light gray. Maybe I'll have it white, uh, because I'm, personally, I'm, I've been in the army and I've done the green thing and I'm not really bothered with it but I love the thing as a piece of engineering it's a lovely bit of kit unfortunately mine was one of the ones that had been um, had all the swim gear removed uh, because when they in the, um, the sort of mid 80s it was deemed that they weren't needed to be amphibious anymore and so when they went in for a service or a base overhaul they had all the swim gear removed and which mine did and I had to find all the bits to make it work again which consists of I found a place on Salisbury Plain that had a whole load of scrap ones there and we just dismantled the bits off them and brought it all home and it's taken me probably five years to get it up to here and today's the day when we see if it's sink or swim. Right, I suppose we better... Uh, His mate Anthony was on hand for all the final the checks. checks. So Is that first bung OK? Let's get that. Yeah. Double check that. The reason why it has bungs is when the vehicle's parked outside, if we get a heavy down full of rain, you've then got two or three hundred gallons of water inside. Um, left hand door, lock and handle okay. That's it, make sure the locking pin's in. Seal's okay. Rear pin. Okay. Sit nice yep. and tight, lovely. Right, back door, locked. Okay, that seems pretty sound, doesn't it? I'm just going to check the. Okay, the yeah, winch just last case. check the winch case. The winch com compartment drain plug. The first time you, you go in the water is actually quite a frightening thing. It's quite disconcerting. Although you're confident with the work that you've, did, with, that you've done and you obviously keep your fingers crossed you haven't lift anything out, it is an unusual feeling because it's, it's, a, it's basically a lorry. Should it float? <laughs> It just seems natural. It, it goes in, at the front end of it lifts up, and next minute you're afloat. Amazing. Uh, after all these years. Underneath the floor, that's a Rolls-Royce B81 petrol, which is an eight-cylinder, six and a half litre straight eight, which is the wrong way round, actually, and driving to a five-speed gearbox into a transfer box, and then the drive comes out from the transfer box sideways, and then forwards and backwards inside the hull, and then through bevel boxes out through to the wheels. So it's a very, very complicated drive system. The water propulsion system drives off the top of the off the top of the gearbox and on a PTO through these prop shafts into these bevel joints and then across these shafts here 
and then into the actual jet drives, which are these there and there. And that's uh, what actually provides the thrust for driving in the water. It's an absolute nightmare to work on because you'll end up in all, all sorts of contorted positions. Um, but I've spent many a happy hour fiddling around with the old girl and, uh, you know, uh, they're great fun. Virtually all the vehicles in the 60s were produced to be amphibious because the idea was if the Russians came, the first thing that would be knocked out would be the bridges. They are mainly used as artillery limbers. Um, the engineers use them for carrying stores and stuff across rivers, um, but mainly the artillery and the tank corps use them for, for carrying fuel and ammunition because they'll go anywhere a tank will go. And of course, the high top, and they could load straight onto a, you know, centurion deck, you know, for fueling, etc. So they were quite useful. When you're driving on the road, people sort of always just, sort of, you know, as you go passing, what the hell's that? You know? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you've got to be a bit mad, I suppose, to own one. But uh, there you go. You got to, you got to do something, haven't you? <laughs>